membership matters, um, how to create a Facebook page Zoom. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Philip Veneta. I am the National Grange Communications Director. We're joined tonight by Carolyn Chamley, who's one of our 2022 Communication Fellows, as well as uh, Elizabeth Heiner, who's a previous fellow, National Lecturer Ann Bircher, who's a previous fellow, and uh, National Grange Membership and Leadership Development Director, Amanda Brazana rios who's also here tonight. Um, again, this is being recorded and will be put up on our YouTube channel as a resource for anybody who needs to do this later. Um, I don't expect you to follow along step by step with me tonight because there are some pages that will go by pretty quickly because it's just filling in information. And then there's some times where it's like, I just need to know how to get back to that page. I need to know how to find some information. If at any point you have questions, please drop them in the chat or shout out. Um, if I'm going too quickly, let me know because I'm a millennial, so I do things quickly and sometimes forget that people are trying to follow what I'm doing. Um, so please remind me at some point where you're like, could you just show me how you got to that step and I will back it up. Um, I know Anne has watched me work on Zoom before and she's always just a little mystified. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen here. Um, so the first thing you need to have is a Facebook account. Um, in order to have a Facebook page for your Grange, you need to be running it from a personal Facebook account. Um, so if you don't already have one of those, that's step zero and I'll send you another starter guide on how to create a general Facebook account at some point. Um, but if we're in Facebook already, should look something like this. And what you're going to do is over here on the left, there's this sidebar where there's all sorts of things you can do. Friends, you can go look at your memories from years past. Well, this flag right here is called pages. And we're gonna start over here. And we're gonna see all of the pages that you already manage if you have multiple pages. Um, and this is only things that you run. So these, you can see here, all of the Granges that I manage everything that I work on um, is here from this page. But you're gonna start with this blue tab right here on the left called create new page. And that brings you to a blank page that looks pretty much like a blank profile because what all new pages are being designed as these days are separate new Facebook profiles that allow you to jump back and forth from interacting as your personal profile to your professional profile, which is your page. Um, so tonight we're going to be working as example Grange number one, two, three. When naming your page, it should be something, it should be your Grange name. Um, if you know that there's multiple Granges of your name in your state, you can add your county. Um, you could add your town. Um, that might be helpful if somebody's looking for, if your Grange is something that's um, like Pomona Grange, of somewhere. So I know I have Center County, Pomona Grange, so people can search for me by my county as well as my Grange. Uh, but we're gonna be example Grange number 123, just for tonight. And this category is required. So depending on where you are, you might be a recognized nonprofit organization. All Granges are in some way. You could put yourself in as a nonprofit organization or you could fill it in and I prefer as a charity organization for the Grange in this category breakdown. It doesn't really matter in the long run what you say there. Um, it's just how you identify and how people are going to look for your organization when they look to you. Um, I, these, this category of required um, box is pre-filled with responses. So I would, tried to put earlier community service organization, but there's nothing there. You get community center, community garden, property lawyers there for some reason. Um, I tried to do family organization, but you get family medicine practice, family therapist. Um, so I think nonprofit organization and charity organization are the two that best describe the Grange in this aspect of what's pre-filled because it doesn't just let you type in and enter, it just goes away. So, and then this optional bio, 
I believe uh, used to be longer, but is now limiting you to 100 characters. So how can you best describe your Grange in 100 characters, which is about 15 to 20 words. Um, so I might do something like example Grange is Townsville's oldest family fraternal service organization. And I wonder how many letters I have left. So let's just try to put in um, since 1867, the national, yeah, and then it cuts me off. I cannot type any further beyond that. So I had four extra words to spare. And what that does is you'll see here on um, the Facebook profile side that it fills that in right away as um, a one line option. So once this is filled in, uh, you're just going to press this final create page button and your page is going to immediately become live, which is fine. Um, so live means we are now a functioning Facebook page. So it'll take a second here. Do, 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 do. Example grade number 123 has been created. So now um, what you, you stay on this page and it now uh, wants you to finish setting up and fill in whatever information you can. Um, so your website, if you have your own website, examplegrange.com would be great. You also, every Grange has a Grange website through grange.org. If you need to know how to access that, how to log in, uh, Stephanie Wilkins, our IT director, can help you get there. Um, you can email her at swilkins at nationalgrange.org. Um, she can help you figure out your login, what your uh, Grange information is, um, but I'm just going to fill in examplegrange.org. Uh, phone number, obvious. Um, and these aren't required for you to fill in, but I would recommend having a phone number listed and email address listed and a website if you have one would be great and everybody does have one and it's a free service of the National Grange. Um, so email address, I'm going to put my own in here. Uh, location, so if you have your own hall, this would be a great space to list your Grange Hall's address. It could be your mailing address if you don't have a Grange Hall or it could be the building that you meet. So um, we're gonna be on 123 Example Street, if I could spell example, in Townsville, zip code, not Townsville, Queensland, zip code 12345. Um, and as you see over here on the right side, it's filling all of this information in right away. So when people are visiting your profile, this is how they're going to figure out how to contact you. So uh, a Facebook and a social media best practice um, is to always have more than one mean of communication. Just because you have an email address listed, somebody might want to contact you in another way besides email. Same with phone numbers. Certain generations don't like calling people on the phone. So if you only have a phone number listed, um, you might find that people aren't going to contact you. Um, and one option is always for them to be able to message you through your page, which we'll get to, to in a little bit. Um, and then the final thing on here is hours. I'm just going to skip that because ranges function at odd times. And I wouldn't say you're always open because then people feel like they can message you at two in the morning. and demand answers. So we're just going to skip that little section. And then it comes to the point to customize your page. So you have two options here on the left, um, one to add a profile picture and one to add a cover photo. So you can either drag and drop or so if you have something on your desktop or in um, your downloads already kind of along the bottom of your screen, they'll hang out there sometimes. You could drag that and drop that right in that spot. Or I know that in my downloads folder, I started some things today and I'm going to start with um, this logo, which is intentionally too large. So you see that it is too large for the circle when it fills in that you can't see the whole range <laughs> emblem there. Now, when you look at the page and you click on that, it will show the full picture, um, but it's intentionally too large for here because I wanna take a moment to plug a free service called Canva. Uh, Canva.com comes pre-filled with templates for the correct sizes for the things that we're doing today. 
So we'll have the correct size for uh, Facebook profile pictures, for Facebook covers, for event photos, um, for Facebook posts. All of those things come pre-filled with the correct sizes that will fill in properly. And just like you'll see here for the Facebook cover does come in at the correct size. The only thing you have to do is drag to reposition it a little. And I don't know why the desktop preview is much smaller than it actually appears when you're looking at it. Um, the other fun thing that you can do from this screen that I just realized is up here in the right corner, directly under my profile picture, there's a little computer and a little phone that lets you see, here's how it's gonna look on a phone. This is the mobile preview that you're looking at now. And then you can flip back to the desktop preview. More people are using Facebook on phones and tablets than on computers these days. So knowing that it's gonna look a little different on a phone is important. That being said, all the steps I'm giving you today, and I forgot to give you this morning ahead of time, this is a how to design a Facebook page from your computer tutorial because it's going to look very different from your phone. Um, but this is just the best way to kind of go through this that I think most of our people will be able to go through step by step. Okay, so you have a profile picture, you have a cover photo. Yes. This add an action button um, adds a button to your screen or to your page that people can immediately take action of some sort. Um, if you were a restaurant setting up, you could go to start an order. If you were running some kind of charity sign up, you could do a sign up. Um, if you were a doctor's office book now, <laughs> I recommend send message or send an email as the two options. Um, send a message will start a Facebook message for you. If you're somebody who's not connected to your Facebook Messenger 24 seven, I know a lot of people don't like having that app on their phone, which is fine. I would suggest um, the send an email option, which will send an email to the address, email address that you put in in the previous step. Um, so you scroll down, click next, and then you put your email address in again. And then that button is going to show up um, on our screen when you get there later. Now, this is a fun step. And this is the step where you tell people that you have a Facebook page because this is your build your page audience. Um, I'm not actually going to invite anybody to this page because I'm probably going to delete this page as soon as we're done with it tonight. Um, but I could, uh, when you click on invite friends, it will show you all of your Facebook friends that you have. So just clicking on one, Amanda, I'm going to send you a Facebook invite to like the Grange, uh, example Grange page, and she will just get a Facebook notification saying somebody has invited her to like a page. Once that's done, um, this option, page notifications on your profile, this will show you these notifications in the, the same spot that you already get Facebook notifications. So up here um, on this little bell, I have a comment on the National Grange page here. Um, the other day, National Grange Youth was really active on here because we were doing our voting for t-shirts. Um, but you can see uh, the, Nash, the ones that are from my pages are the ones that appear in parentheses. And I'll show you jumping back and forth between profiles here in just a second. And then you click done and you have a Facebook page. Now, this is very basic. There's still some more information to fill in here in a little bit. Um, if you're brand new to Facebook and have never used a page before ever, I would recommend taking this tour because um, it will kind of show you where some things are hidden um, how to edit certain things. Uh, I would recommend that you take that at some point just so you understand what you're getting into. And if you don't take it right away, you see I got this pop-up over here that reminds me that at any point I can click this little three buttons and there's the start tour is down there and that will live there forever. So right now I am example Grange number 123. This is what, if I logged back into Facebook right now, this is the first Facebook page that would pop up. Um, up here in the right corner where you see now I have the Grange emblem is my Facebook profile picture up here in the corner. When you click on that, you can, excuse me, switch back to one of your previous profiles. 
um, or your personal profile. So mine is going to be right here with this little, my tiny little face there. Well, let me switch back to my regular profile. Um, but then if you're gonna work on the page, you click see all profiles. And here we are, example range number 123, and you're able to jump right back into editing the profile that you're in. Um, so there's two other things that I, uh, or a few other things, not just two, that I would recommend that you do. Um, first, you're gonna go back to your home page. So click the little house at the top. And one of the things that you want to do um, for Facebook best practices and for all social media best practices is that one person should not be the sole keeper of the social media. Um, if you get hit by a bus, if an accident happens of some sort, if you're ill, if you suddenly decide that you're not a member anymore um, and you're the sole person with access, that's not the best thing for the organization. Uh, so what you're gonna do is here on the left now, when you're interacting as your page, your sidebar looks a little different. You now have these four extra buttons here, ads manager, ad center, meta business suite, meta being the owner of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, as well as many other things in the metaverse, and this professional das dashboard. Um, so here in the professional dashboard, dashboard, and then go to page access. There it is. Things are never where I think they are. Okay, so if you didn't catch that yesterday, here on the sidebar was an, a thing that says page access. And this is gonna bring you to this page of who has access to your page. So there's a difference between Facebook access and task access. Facebook access means anybody would have the option to switch profiles back and forth like we just, like I just showed you. Task access would be somebody who can come in to maybe create events, um, moderate some posts, that kind of thing. And there's also community managers who, as you see, can suspend or remove people who violate community standards, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I would recommend that you have at least two people with full Facebook access for your page. So up here on the right, it says add new. And this is, again, just telling you what I just did. Face, you can switch back into the page. Um, anyone with Facebook access can share the page experience. So Amanda, I'm going to invite you um, to be my second in command here. And again, it just says, here's everything that she has the rights to do. I'm going to allow her to have full control as well. And I'm going to give her access, re-enter my Facebook profile password. And there we go. So Amanda will have uh, an invite next time she logs into Facebook. We'll say, Philip has invited you to be a uh, an administrator on his page. Do you accept they have the right to say yes or no? Now task access, when you go into here and add new again is on the right there. Um, let's see, Carolyn, am I friends with you on this? I am. Okay, so here on this one, lets me pick and choose exactly what I want to allow Carolyn to do. Um, can she be a content manager? So that lets her add, edit or delete posts. Sure, she can do that. Um, which immediately lets her be able to respond to messages and review community activity. So that's moderating posts, that kind of stuff. Do I want her to be able to create ads? Ads are something that for many of you who are just creating Facebook pages are gonna be a long day, long way down the road. So I will probably do another one of these at some point about creating Facebook ads. So we'll just leave that blank for now. And then insights is a back channel for anybody who's running Facebook pages to kind of show them how things are working back and forth, um, what days generate the best content, uh, and best views, what people are responding to, that kind of thing. So I'm just letting Carolyn here have access to create content, respond to messages as the page, and to review community activity. Go through that again. And again, Carolyn will have an invitation. And then if you if you were running another page, you could have a community manager, that kind of thing. Uh, now this way, if 
I am in an accident. Amanda now has the rights to fully run the page and Carolyn still has the rights to be creating content and stuff like that. Um, Amanda also now has the right to remove me as an administrator from the page. So if I quit the Grange in a huff at some point because something happened, Amanda will cry deeply first, but, <laughs> but she now has the right to remove me from the page as soon as that happens. So that way I can't go in and cause trouble on that page. And you, one thing that you almost never want to do is have to restart a page from the ground up because it's really hard to build your audience again. So, so those are, go ahead, Amanda. We had a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, if you- I could, may have just answered it. Okay, yeah, when you get a chance, if you go back and just show how once you already have a page, you can still invite people to like it. Oh yes, absolutely. So, um, I just jumped back to my homepage here. And if you click here at the very top where it says uh, example Grange one, two, three, so that'll be your Grange name. It'll take you to your profile and then invite friends. So these three dots on the side where they hide lots of things in here, cause we're going to come in here later, um, to invite friends, uh, switch into the profile. So you have to go back to your original profile. That's why it wasn't where I thought it was. So you have to go into your personal profile that created the page and then you can invite your friends because your page has no friends. So um, I will make that clearer. Uh, Wayne, if someone has Facebook access and everyone leaves passes, is there a way that you can get someone back into the admin position? Yes, but it's hard. Um, it involves a lot to Facebook. Um, and at that point, it might be easier to start a new Facebook page. Uh, the one thing for best practices I would recommend as well, um, most Granges, I would recommend tying it to a non-personal email address as well. So to an email address that multiple people have access to, it is much easier to recover an email address of somebody who has passed away than it is to recover their Facebook page. Um, so that would be my best practices. For example, Penns Valley Grange. Wait, 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 say that again more slowly about tying it to a per, uh, group email. Yes. So I would say recommend. That more slowly. Yeah. So I would recommend, for example, Penns Valley Grange, so my home Grange, our Facebook account was created pvgrange158 at gmail.com. That is our Grange's email address that I have access to, my mother has access to because she's our president and our secretary has access to. So that way, when somebody needs to be able to log into the Facebook account again, they can log in with that email address or attempt to at least recover it through that email address. Um, so that way somebody can be made a new admin. Um, I would recommend adding as many people as you feel comfortable with to that admin role. So that way, if Amanda and I are traveling together, which we do, if we were both in an accident, somebody still has access to that page. Um, I know a lot of people are looking for ways to involve youth in their granges and asking them to be a, a webmaster, an IT director, something in that vein of running your Facebook page is a great way to give them a task that they feel um, is worthy and worth their time um, and investment. So millennials and Gen Z really gravitate toward tasks that they feel um, utilize their talents to the best of their ability. So a Facebook page, which doesn't take a ton of time to moderate for most community granges is going to be something that they feel is worth their time, if that makes sense. So we're gonna flip back into the profile here now. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to change your um, URL, because right now, if I go to example Grange 123's page, you see my URL is facebook.com slash profile.pht question mark 100. Blah, blah, blah. That's not going to let anybody find me. That does not go well on a business card or on a poster. 
in Meta so, Business Suite, you're going to go to All Tools. And under All Tools, there's this button here on the side that says Page Settings. Um, and you're going to click on that. And that brings you to this general page settings section. Um, so you're, this would be if you had a typo in your name, if your Grange merges with another Grange at some point, and I want to change your Facebook page without having to start a totally new one. This is, first of all, where you can change your Grange name. Um, example, Grange 123. You can only change it once every seven days. So that way people don't get totally confused. Um, but setting a username, this is what becomes the back half of your URL. So now when somebody goes to facebook.com slash example grange one, two, three, weirdly this username is available. Um, it will now let me save it. So this is where um, if you had multiple granges, I know there are multiple granges in across the country with the same name. Um, I know there are multiple granges in some states with the same name. So this is how you can personalize that. However, you feel people in your community and where you're advertising are going to best be able to connect to your page. Um, but one thing I would just caution Phil is because we have so many duplicate names like Valley Grange, yeah. for example, is on yeah. almost every state. You know, if, if you know that there's a duplicate out there, try to be kind. Um, yeah. because otherwise you're going to take Valley Grange and somebody in some other community in a completely different state will find you instead of them and the reverse will happen and it will cause confusion because all they know is your Valley. They don't right. know that there's 14 other ones. So trying to put that number sounds really ridiculous, but, um, a lot of times that really helps calm some of the confusion. Oh, absolutely. The other thing that I was going to recommend would be, sorry, it would be on your name of making it example Grange 123 Townsville, Pennsylvania, or something like that in your name. So that way when people are searching for you, they can also find you that way. Um, or if there's multiple in your state, you know, you could make your username example Grange Townsville or example Grange, Pennsylvania, um, example Grange, PA, something like that, that people will hopefully remember. Uh, some other Facebook best practices quickly to talk about. Um, some people wanna know why, how often you should post um, for optimal engagement, for keeping your audience two to three times a week um, for these kinds of pages is the best for posting. And they don't all need to be original posts. Um, if you don't know, National Grange put, page puts up what I call evergreen posts or um, posts that are about specific holidays, that kind of thing. So this is a post from this past Saturday. It was Constitution Day. And one thing that, A, you should do, first of all, is when you log in, you sh should go to National Grange and click this follow button up here in the corner. And that way your page is now following the National Grange. So if you log in as your page, you see us in your um, newsfeed, just like you see all of your Facebook friends. But then when you're looking at this post, you can click the share button down here. And if you're logged in as your Facebook page, you automatically just get the share now public or share to feed. Share, to, share now public shares the post exactly as it was written. Share to feed lets you add your own context to it. Um, so I could say, you know, example Grange is in the heart of Pennsylvania, home of uh, where the constitution was signed. Or I could say, you know, the national Grange believes in defending the constitution and equal rights um, or, you know, anything that just add some context for why it's important that your Grange is sharing this post. And when you're in here, if you've never created a Facebook post before, um, you have a bunch of options. Um, the things that engage people the most are photos and videos. So I'd always recommend including a photo or a video in your post. So you click this little green button down here that lets you add a photo video. And this works just the same as before uh, when we added the 
profile picture. And this is a Facebook post that will be up on National Grange's page on Thursday for the beginning of autumn. Um, it's a quote from the steward in the third degree. And you can add some context to this if you wanted. Um, and I re would always recommend adding some text just for context beyond the picture. The other reason for that is there are some people who can't read the text that's in the picture. Yeah, I'm gonna skip putting any text there for right now. Edit posted, it's posting. And now you have your very first post on your Facebook page. Actually, you have one already because you have one from when you put your profile picture up. But your first post is there. And then Amanda wanted me to show you one more thing tonight, which is how to create an event to leverage your uh, outreach. So we are again going to come over here to our professional dashboard. And in this left tab here uh, on the sidebar says events about halfway down on mine anyway. And then there's this blue button all the way on the other side of the screen that says create event. And this is where you get to start creating your event. And this is gonna look a lot like the steps that you went through to create your Facebook page. Um, so you have your option uh, when the pandemic hit a couple months in, they added this online option. So if you're hosting a webinar, a Zoom conference, um, a YouTube speaker, anything like that, you could do your online option. Some people are doing, you know, um, I don't think I've seen any Grangers doing it, but I've seen at least one church that did a virtual movie night that they were able to join together in a chat room and all watch a movie together from separate locations. It's a great way for engaging your members who are not local. That would be a great option if you were hosting a, a meeting and wanted to have a Zoom link and invite not members and non-members from the community. So if you were having an outside speaker come in, I might create an online event for that so that you put the Zoom link in there that people can automatically connect. But we're gonna do an in-person event tonight. And we're gonna do a crab boil. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my mind tonight, but that's what we're doing. So your event name goes right there. And that's what when people search for, um, that's what's gonna come up. Example, Grange Crab Boil, this is gonna be, I would always recommend creating Facebook events about two weeks in advance. Um, just so that way people can share them and they get out into the public more. Uh, any shorter than that, you're going to end up um, hurting yourself much longer than that. They're gonna get lost in the shuffle of things and people are going to RSVP and say, yes, I'm going and then forget about it until the day that it pops up again on their calendar. So I recommend about two weeks in advance of putting this out there. So this is gonna be next Saturday and we're gonna start. So the start time lets you pick in 15 minute increments from midnight all the way to 11.45 at night. So we're gonna start at noon for our crab boil. You now have two options here. Um, you can add an end date and time. So I know that this only runs, I like that, three hours. From 12 to three is our crab boil. The other option that you can do is a recurring event, which would be this happens daily, weekly, custom. So you could make it say every second Tuesday, um, so if you want to create a, uh, an event for your Grange meetings and you meet every other Friday or every other Thursday or every the third Thursday of every month, um, those are all things that you could change this uh, frequency to. But we're not going to do that. It's just going to be a simple event. Um, now, the privacy is automatically set to public because any Facebook group is public by nature or any Facebook page, sorry, is public by nature. So all of your events and everything that happens on your page are public as well. Um, a description, this should be short and snappy. Um, and it really doesn't have to be actually, this could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, this could have every detail about your crab boil. It could have, um, this is where you can add things like as you're uh, adding sponsors, that kind of thing would be a great spot to put in your description. And then your category, this is going to be everything from visual arts uh, all the way to theater, healthy living, self-care, fitness and workout, social issues, um, 
what would I call a crab boil out of these options? A party? Sure, we're gonna call it a party. And you don't have to set a category either, um, but it's, or maybe you do. Um, but that way people who are looking for, uh, there's an option when you're searching on Facebook that's like, please show me all game events happening in this area, in this range. Um, and you do have to type something in here or else it's not going to let me go anywhere. Skip it, um, come out and, and enjoy some crabs and some crabby games. Uh, because it's a physical event, you have to include a location. Um, I'm going to put it at I don't know why, why is our building not showing up, Amanda? National Grange building's not there. Hmm, weird. Well, I do know it also shows up at this National Junior Grange though. So that's where it's going to be. So as you can see, this is uh, automatically, um, once you have your location in there, um, automatically pops up a little map here on the right to show, uh, people viewing your event where they're coming to go. This is gonna work exactly the same as before. Um, you can upload your cover photo. I would should have made a separate cover photo for this, but I didn't. So I'm gonna upload this Membership Matters one here, um, which will pre-fill again in this location. If you have a ticket link, if you're pre-selling tickets for your event, um, this is where to add it. If you don't, it's not necessary. And then other event settings, um, you can add individuals, pages, or followers as a co-host. So uh, National Grange is going to be added as a co-host for this. And so is, oh, Amanda's not a follower of my page yet, so I can't add her. <laughs> um, this is also a great spot uh, in this um, event settings. One thing that I love to do for events is turn on. So if the blue here on the right means it's on, um, let's say posts must be approved by a host. So that lets other people post. This is especially great for things like craft fairs that I know people host, um, vendor shows, food truck races. I don't know what a food truck race is, but if you figure that out, invite me. Um, that way they can post as well, instead of just limiting it just to the hosts. But by approving it means that somebody on your pages team has to say, yes, this is acceptable to be posted here. And then once you click save, you click publish event and do, 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 do. your event is live. Um, then to invite people to the event, you have to do what we did before. You're going to have to jump back to your personal profile. And let me go look for example, green crab boil, bring that up. There it is. And I should now be able to invite guests. So over here, um, I can invite people directly from the side panel over here. And if you click see all um, example, Grange is going and one person also said that they were coming. So congratulations to whoever got in on that already. Or up here on the right above the map also says invite. And this is where you can select all of your friends who you would like to come to this event. I will say that it limits you, limits you to inviting a hundred people to an event at a time. Um, so if I click select, or 500 people, sorry. So if I click select all, um, it selected all 408 of my Facebook friends, apparently. So, hey, friend me on Facebook, guys. This is my professional profile, and I'd like to be friends with all of you. Um, and then you click send invites. I'm not going to do that so these people don't get invited to a fake event. Uh, and yeah. That's that. Are there any questions on? Okay, so we're gonna walk you through getting from your personal profile to that section. Um, there's two ways to get there. One 
is, in my opinion, the easiest. And that's clicking on your profile picture in the upper right corner, clicking see all profiles, going to the page that you want to manage. So I'm going to go to the example Grange page because that's what we've been playing in tonight. And that's going to bring you to your news feed. Then here on the left are the two areas that we need to get to. There's the meta business suite and the professional dashboard are both on the left sidebar. Um, and that's where you're going to run most of the things from your page from. Uh, there's only so much I can show you in about 45 minutes. But the meta business suite has under the all tools, a ton of options for how to manage and run your page. A lot of these are for what I would call more professional organizations. Um, so actual stores, businesses, things, things that aren't more volunteer driven like we are. Um, we're happy that people are following a lot of Grange pages. So go follow as many Grange pages as you can. But um, ads manager is much more important for revenue driven, driven companies than uh, the Grange. Um, now you can run your events manager from here. So this will take me to, oh, because I haven't been here before, it's gonna show me all of these things, which you can definitely do. Um, if you were running multiple events at a time, they would show up here. Um, but Meta is crazy and I'm just gonna back out of here. So then to get back to your professional page or the professional dashboard, Anytime you click on your profile picture out of the meta business suite, it's going to bring you to your profile and your professional dashboard will show up in the left sidebar, either from your profile or from your newsfeed, um, which is just the best way to uh, run your show. Um, hey, one person already engaged with my uh, post, so that's great. This page, um, uh, just a couple of things that you can see on this page on your professional dashboard are all of the posts that you've had up recently. Um, your post reach lets you, is, is how many people have seen your post. Post engagement is how many people have liked, commented, stopped to watch your video, um, shared your posts. And then new page likes is how is your audience growing? So, these are some insights that might be important to you to let you know when people are seeing things. And then individually down here lets you show, or it shows you who or how many people have seen your posts in this recent post section. Then if you click on one of those posts, it gets even more detailed, letting you know how many people liked it, hearted it, laughed at it, were surprised by it, cried at it, or were angry by it. Um, it would give you all of the people who commented would show up here or the number of comments would show you how many people shared it. And then other clicks are people who watched your video, um, clicked to follow a link, so if you had a link out of your post, those kind of things would go from there. I don't know how to make the sound. Um, and then, let's see, is there, Amanda, is there anything that you think that I'm missing right now? Um, the one thing that I was going to ask you to speak on is speaking as the Grange, not as an individual. When oh, yes. So the Grange voice is important. Um, let me show you. Um, so this is my one of my Grange's page, one of my Grange's pages. So this is Penns Valley Grange. So the one thing that I try really hard to do and that you should do from your Facebook page is to not speak as an I, but speak as a we and to speak from the point of the Grange. Um, so this post was made by my mother, so I'm allowed to pick on it for a little bit. Sorry, mom. Um, so it says some of the 100 stockings that our members made, they'll be sent to stockings for soldiers in Delaware. Their names, which she misspelled there. Sorry, mom, I haven't fixed that will be put on solid felt, filled with goodies and sent to our active military members. This is a fine post. Um, I would might expand on it just a little bit. Um, I would have tagged stockings for soldiers, for example, um, but this is one of one post that you can look at. Uh, can you show how to edit that while you're on there? I, if this was your Facebook page and you saw a typo, something that you wanted to edit, 
Um, there's this, what I call a hamburger menu, although it's, it's sideways, so I think it's technically a hot dog up here in the corner that you can click on. Um, this is where you can edit a, a whole bunch of things about your post. So I'm gonna click edit this post. Um, some of the 100 stockings that our members made, they will be sent to. So to tag somebody, you start with an at in front of it. And then I'm going to delete all of that. Stockings for soldiers, Delaware Inc. So I'm gonna tag them to let them know that this is happening. And then I'm going to fix this typo. Take out in Delaware. Oh yeah, because it duplicated it. <laughs> uh, so some of the hundred stockings that our members made, they will be sent to Stockings for Soldiers, Delaware Inc. Their names will be put on the solid felt, filled with goodies and sent to our active military members. This is one of Penn's Valley Bridges service projects for this year. Add that in there to let people know why we did it other than, hey, we did this. Uh, just to let people know that we're giving back to our community. Now, Stockings for Soldiers Delaware will receive a notification to say, somebody tagged them in a post and they'll be able to come in and look at our post as well. Um, here is the heirloom program, which there's a whole YouTube series on the heirloom program. So this is our September post. So I'll just remind everybody to go to bit.ly slash Grange heirloom, which gives you access to all of the heirloom program materials for year A, B, C, D, and E are all available on there right now. At least the brochures are. Amanda and I need to work on the graphics for uh, year B because we're coming up pretty soon on that, which is scary. So that comes with cover pictures, posts, all sorts of things in there. Any questions that I can answer in the two minutes before Amanda takes over for Membership Matters? You take as long as you need. Well, Bill, I'll see. Any questions? Yes. Bill, uh, not a question, more so add on. I made a mistake a few years ago. I got a little bit upset with Facebook and I thought I'd ask enough people to be the other uh, admin. Mm -hmm. And so I clicked and then you delete your, all your friends and everything. Well, come to find out a couple of them didn't respond and they're out in, out in the world somewhere. Yeah. You need to make sure they actually accept to run the page. And there's only a 30 day period of that. Yeah. And then the other thing is on my own hometown Grange, the lady, her current president, was not wild that she was the new addict. So you need to do, like you're saying, younger, but try to find someone else that wants to do it, not just say, here yeah. you go. <laughs> yes, make sure make sure the people that you're asking to run um, feel comfortable with Facebook. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's confusing sometimes. It's a pain in the butt sometimes. I get it. I don't love the technology, but it's what we have. And actually, Betsy wrote about it for this week's Patrons Chain, too. Um, because the one page that I will recommend everybody follow is this National Grange Community Service and Activities page. This is run by Pete Pomper, our Community Service Director, and he shares posts from all over the country of what Granges are doing, um, how they're being active in their communities. So I'd recommend everybody follow this page. It's here on the left, um, National Grange Community Service and Activities. I'm going to join it. Um, and that way people can see, you can look for new ideas, essentially, is um, see the events that people are doing, uh, see what kind of activities are happening around the country is all kind of uh, fun to me to see, oh, I've never thought of that. I never would have, you know, uh, I saw Jonesboro, Grange, and Maine. I pick on them a lot because they're doing some really cool things. They did a, a duck race um, and dumped like a thousand rubber duckies in their river and people bid or bet on certain numbers and it was really fun and it was a fundraiser for their range but also garnered huge community support um okay any other questions comments concerns phil how do you move from if you have this is joan Hi, if joan. you have your own page mm -hmm. and i have the national grange foundation and mm -hmm. i have ag in the classroom how do you move from one to the other easily so they're in the process of updating pages that have been created in the past to this new page format 
So there's two options for how to get there. Um, the first is by clicking on your profile picture in the upper right corner of the screen. And then when you click see all profiles, we'll lay out all of the profiles I have access to from here. So these are all of the pages that have been transitioned to this new profile system. There are some older pages that have not yet. Um, National Grange Youth, for example, just moved over to this profile system about three weeks ago, I think. Um, so if you're here on your standard Facebook page, um, so I'm back at, in here is Philip J. Veneta right now. On the left on that sidebar is uh, pages, which comes with this orange flag. And then um, as you can see, so National Grange Youth, Example Grange, Sample Grange, who I was playing with this morning to make sure I knew what I was doing for tonight. Uh, and National Grange, they have all been in the switch to this profile mode. These other pages have not yet and will likely be transitioning soon. Um, but Joan, so since I'm also on the Grange Foundation page, I can click right on Grange Foundation. And then once you're in here, um, the page looks very similar to that profile mode that we've been working in, but it just hasn't updated entirely to let you switch back and forth here on the right or in the upper sidebar. Okay. Well, that makes, makes sense, Joan. Yes, thank you. I'll I'll try it. <laughs> wait, wait. How do you know if your pages has been updated anything yet? Okay. So, so <laughs> Anne, was that you? Okay. Yeah. How do you know uh, if your pages have been all updated to the new new format? So here, National Grange Youth has this blue bar that says switch now. Um, okay. Which, which lets me switch into the profile. So down here on National Grange Lecture. Oh, it's not there not there yet. So this page has not been transitioned into the profile mode yet. Okay. okay. Um, and is is it uh, Facebook that's doing that switch yeah. or do we have to do something? I think Facebook is doing it automatically because I did not ask for National Grange Youth to do it and I don't think Mandy did either. I think it's, I think they're going through old pages and updating them a couple at a time. There are millions of Facebook pages out there. So it's taking them a long time to complete this process. But even if you're not in profile mode, once you've clicked off that pages banner, running things here off this side are uh, works exactly the same than as profile mode. Because once I was in the page manager, I have Meta Business Suite right here on the side um, to let me work on the same things that I was working for a little bit ago. Okay. Quick I was here for canva.com. And I call this Photoshop for dummies. Canva's um, amazing. It's such a great resource. It's, uh, there are, is a free version and a paid version. Um, the free version is just as good as the paid version. Paid version just gives you more access to extra fonts, extra photos, that kind of stuff. Extra um, graphics. Extra graphics, yeah. A lot of the stuff that I put out, in fact, most things that I put out on National Grange's Facebook page um, you see have been created right here in Canva from the things that I've been working on. Um, so uh, tomorrow is both the International Day of Peace and World Alzheimer's Day. So we'll have two different posts coming out on the National Grange Facebook page tomorrow about those. This is that autumn post that I showed you earlier. This was the Facebook cover that I put up earlier. Um, I will put a plug in. I'm soon going to be designing um, a universal Facebook cover that is quickly editable for all Granges. Um, I know Amanda did one of those during the pandemic. So it's just something that's on my radar again to kind of unite Granges across the country as an option to put up as your Facebook header. Um, well, I'll be working on that in the next couple of weeks. So if you, pick a can if you pick that Alzheimer's site mm -hmm. and you put the Grange emblem on there, you're going to do the same thing for the whatever the other one was, the International Day of whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, it's blank right now. Uh, go to the next one. Oh, over There's to the two... day piece. There you go. That one. Okay. Now there, oh, you already put the emblem on. Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> How did you do that? Okay. So a quick and dirty, uh, uh, post here. So I'm going to start with a blank post. So I'm going to create a design. It's going to be a Facebook post. And uh, Joan, give me a topic quickly. Um, Halloween. Halloween. Okay, we'll go with that. Sure. Thank you, Joan. 
Okay, so you can search right away by templates. So we're gonna go Halloween. Um, I'm just gonna grab one of these randomly. So this is a pre-filled template. Everything here is available to download. Uh, if you like this site or this post as it is, you could just download this and put it right up on your site. I don't recommend that because reallygreatsite.com doesn't take you anywhere. Um, so this is editable, every function of this. So everything that this little purple square is popping up around is an individual element of this site. Um, once you're in here, you can double click on the text and this works just the same as a Word document, as an Excel, PowerPoint, anything like that. So if for some reason National Grange was promoting Halloween, um, we are uh, safety. Be safe. We will. We will actually, and we are. We are promoting a trick or treat for UNICEF. Yes. Uh, so you can do that. So www.nationalgrange.com or nationalgrange.org. I was able to put in there very quickly. Um, I'm going the Grange to, Foundation. You know, I'm able to drop it in, resize it, and put it in. Of course, I would make this look much more fashionable in, in normal time. Um, but yeah, I will be sending you guys all the logo. And then what do you do? So now you've got that page made. So you're here. Um, then up here in the upper right corner. So suppose that this was complete and finished. This yeah. is not at all anything that I would put out normally. Um, right. You can click this share link that's up here in the upper right corner. And then go to download. And it gives you a bunch of different options. Generally, um, you're going to be uploading it again on your Facebook download it as a PNG or as a JPEG are the two best options. I'll just keep it as a PNG. I'm gonna click download. It's going to go into my downloads folder on my computer here. And then I'm going to jump back to Facebook. Um, since I'm logged in as, as example Grange, you can make a post directly from your newsfeed like you could as a personal profile. So what's on my mind example Grange? Halloween is coming up and oh my goodness. And boy, do we have the spooks for you. Uh, I'm gonna click the green photo video ad. I'm gonna click on the gray like I did before, go back to my downloads folder. And there's the post that I just made. And there we go. And then I would click post. Wow. And I know I do that really quickly. Don't worry on the YouTube video, you can pause and <laughs> follow that step-by-step. Step. Um, wow, that's great, okay. But it's a quick and easy, the really cool thing about Canva is um, there's this elements tab on the side that if you're looking for anything related to Halloween, you can just put that in as a search term and all of these really cool things pop up. Um, this afternoon I was looking, I was designing that uh, third degree post that we'll see pop up on Tuesday. So I searched for autumn backgrounds, um, which is how I got, you know, the pumpkin, the squashes, the everything that's there. Um, and you're able to change fonts. There's literally, I think a thousand fonts in here now that you can pick and edit. Um, the whole the whole point of designing Facebook posts is to make them as eye-catching as possible. You want people to stop as they're scrolling through Facebook um, to get them. Now, I do wanna quickly touch on internal and external communication, which I talked about at Eastern Regional Conference and at uh, Great Plains, and say that there are certain things that don't need to go up on your Facebook page. Um, I saw a post from a Grange that I'm not going to call out right now the other day that said, um, it was clearly somebody who was a little disgruntled and it said, we need help for the food stand if we don't get it. Or no, it said, I need help for running the food stand. If I don't get it, I'm done and I'm I, we're shutting down. It was essentially the gist of the post that went out on their Grange Facebook page. And as somebody who's looking to potentially join said Grange, if that was the first post that I came across for their their Grange, I don't think that would leave the best taste in my mouth. Um, so keeping your messaging that's going out on your Facebook positive, uh, community oriented, and knowing what kind of audience you're trying to reach is very important 
um, for making the best use of your Facebook. I'm also gonna show you while I'm here quickly, quickly. Uh, clicking these three dots also lets me just delete a post, by the way. So if you make a big boo-boo that's not editable, just go ahead, delete the post and it will go away. Um, and you can pretend that it never happened. Hmm. Okay, any, that is, that is one time that what you put on the Grange or on the, the internet will actually disappear. Because if somebody shared that post and you delete it, it deletes their shares as well. Yes, hi, Trisha. Hi, Phil. I was, I'm was i having dessert, so I'm eating off camera. But, um, you know, you're talking about a Grange that had a post. I I, I think I know who it might be, but I'm not going to share it either. But um, do you think that some of them, I, I know a Grange that uses their Facebook like that as a, like, members only. I okay. happen to be, was a member? They had they did it, like, as a private group type thing. Do you think they're using it more as that as opposed to trying to get members? Right. There is a difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Um, Facebook pages are 100% public. Facebook groups, so if you were creating, if you wanted something for your members only to share information back and forth like that, um, a group can be made private. And I would highly recommend that uh, if you're making a group to keep it private, um, just because yeah. you don't know who can get in and see the information. Yep. Uh, I would also recommend that Facebook's probably not the best way to communicate between Grange members between meetings, um, except through the Facebook page. So if it's something that needs to stay private, keep it in an email. That's yep. my, my best practice. So I, I remember a couple of years ago that um, Amanda covered this where I think a lot of us, at least I had started my a Facebook page for my Grange and we started as a group where people had to, and we, you know, they had to ask me or you invited people to join it, things like that. Now we switch it to a page. Is if I still have the group one, is good, bad, and different? What's your thoughts on which way to go? I think it's confusing. It is confusing. <laughs> I would say that the page is better because it's more likely that people are going to follow your page. So I would recommend just sticking to a page to get your information out. So the people that are part of okay, so I'm taking over the call, the call here. So people that are part of the, my my group. If I was to archive that page, so that group, so it's not, it's no, it's not active. Will they be able to find the page, or do you have to reinvite them to the page, or what's? How does that work? What I would do is post in the group, give them a heads up, tag the page to say, "Hi, in ten days, this page or this group will become inactive. Please, everybody, okay. position your membership to this page instead." Um, okay. To our page, uh, you would have the option from your personal profile to invite all those members to your page. Um, so you can send them an invitation, um, so that they know that it's moving. And then the one thing that you have to do when you're deleting a group is every member has to be individually removed from that group before it's able to be deleted, Oh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, uh, you think? <laughs> all the time um, our Grange does something a little different. We have our Facebook page that we use for like community outreach and stuff like that like it's open to the public but we use an app called band for our mm -hmm. internal communications and that's where that's you have to be a member you get invited after your application is accepted and all that jazz and that's where we do our day-to-day -day like oh hey we have this fundraiser that dropped in our lap this weekend or you know we have this opportunity here and we post about our project meetings in there and we do a lot of stuff on our Facebook page too, but it's a little more tailored to our members through band. And it's, it's a fantastic little program. Yeah, so you see Battleborn and Wells uh, Facebook page on the, the public profile side. So me looking at it as a non-member, it looks um, a little like uh, it's more engagement oriented, inviting people in, uh, which is what I recommend for Facebook pages too, is give them, give people an access point and an entry point. Uh, I'm very jealous how good their page looks. Thank you. <laughs> do you is that want you, Carolyn? Oh, yes, that is, it is mine. Um, Dan, you can you come work for my grade? Show, <laughs> show our, our band page real quick, Phil? Um, let me get to Susie and then, yeah, if you want to, you can show band here in a second. I'll, okay. Susie, what can I do for you? Oh, well, I was going to talk about the fact that the Oregon State Grange, which 
is where I work, <laughs> has both pages, both a public page and a private page, uh, group. Mm -hmm. Part of it came along, we used to have everything public, and it came along that we switched our Oregon State Grange member forum to private, and you have to be a member of the Grange in Oregon, except for a few of you that get on there because I added you. Um, because we wanted to be able to discuss things that were in the media about Grange with other Grangers so they understood where the state Grange was, what the state Grange was doing about the publicity or not so good publicity. Uh, but we didn't really want all of it out there for anybody in the public to see. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I got a little distracted by people out there. Okay, so, so I'm sorry. So this is our band for our Grange. This is uh, this is what we use for our day-to-day -day contact. So it's got our the Grange logo here, some of our information, um, upcoming events. You can see we've got a dump tank again, the fall festival. Um, we post things here like our horse project. We're just coming out of weeks of smoke. So I postponed our horse project back a couple of weeks so that can, the horse's lungs can heal um, and clear out. You know, we've got our entries for our old timer and Huey goat show coming up. Um, some of our families post their what their youth have won and the different things. But I think I think single coolest thing about band is I can go in here to events and it pulls up a calendar and oh, okay here we got our archery project if i click on archery project it pulls it up and i can go join and i can go save and it'll save to my calendar it's kind of blown out i'm sorry i'm i'm on my tablet and doing this on my computer um but you can sync it to your um your, your calendar on your phone or on your Laptop. I've got all of my stuff. Um, Things together because I'm on I'm on a Mac system, so my laptop, my tablet, and my phone, and everything are all synced. But this way, you can add it directly to your schedule, and nobody gets lost. Nobody. It, it reduces the amount of oh I forgot. Um, and all of our project leaders come through here and enter in, you know, different projects for different the different months and, and all of our meetings and stuff go in here. And then our members uh, take it from there. And it's, it's nice to have, um, it's nice to have, I can't get rid of this thing. Um, it's nice to have one place where everything happens and for our members and they can come in and message me directly. And it's not lost in the world of Facebook um they can post questions or if they have a problem with one of their animals um then uh we can take care of that um, uh elizabeth am i going to do a workshop of this at national convention i wasn't planning to but the fellows are leading a workshop on wednesday at national session from four to five o'clock um and this might be one of the topics that we choose to cover uh, I'm letting the five fellows kind of figure that workshop out themselves, but I'm going to put a plug in for my other communications workshop at National Grange, which will be on Thursday. We are going to be joined by Dr. Todd Feltz from the University of Nevada at Reno. Um, Dr. Feltz is going to do a workshop called Becoming a Social Media Animal, which will also be live streamed um, on our YouTube and Facebook. So you don't have to tune in then. It will save it automatically so you can watch it later. Uh, but he is going to be talking about connecting advocacy to social media, which is something that uh, University of Nevada, Reno, their communications and their journalism departments do extremely well. Um, so I was, he and I had a great conversation the other day. He's very interested and is looking forward to seeing folks at National. Um, the one thing that I will say is when you're working on Facebook is to be patient. Don't worry about asking questions. Um, Facebook, especially since they've moved to Meta, moves things all the time. Um, so things that I thought I knew where they were, and it also looks different depending on how big your screen is. 
Um, if you have your screen at full size, links will be in one place. If you only are working on half your screen, it'll look different. And if you're on your iPhone or your tablet or your Android, it's going to look very different than any of those things. Um, so the best way to find these things is to just keep poking around and eventually stumble upon it. So, or call me and I'll try to guide you there. Okay, so Amanda, the night is yours. Now. Super glad that um, you hit almost perfectly the starting uh, to put up an event like at the almost 830 mark. So this worked out really well because I don't have to do that piece um, and you've gotten a lot of the questions answered. So that's awesome. Um, we talked last month about doing kind of a share um, evening uh, once a month where we have a specific topic and you guys share what has worked for you, or you ask questions of the group that they can share what's worked for them um, and do some moderated discussion. And so we're going to have our first one of those um, coming Sunday up. evening. Um, but I thought we would kind of do a little piece of that tonight as well. Um, as far as the pages and um, events on Facebook, I, I did want Phil to be able to introduce pages and then introduce how to do the events because um, one thing that we're hearing from some of the Granges that are doing well with um, bringing in new members is they're not just bringing them into meetings. Um, while you can certainly post your meetings as events, um, they're doing well by bringing them into the fundraiser or bringing them into you know the fun activity or bringing them into the pre-meeting um, you know, junior activity where you can bring all your kids or, or whatever it is, um, because they're able to introduce the Grange's, you know, fun aspects, because not many people are like Phil and I, where we really like meetings, um, because we're weird. Um, most people find meetings to be uncomfortable. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what they're walking into. Um, we're doing all these strange things with odd words and so they're having a much better time of getting folks to say, you know, I really like what you guys do. Um, I'd like to join you when they come to all of these type of fun things, whether it's a spaghetti dinner or whether it's, you know, a dance or something like that. Um, and I say fun and you and I are all laughing in the back of our heads because to us, the spaghetti dinner is work. But to your community, it's a fun night. They're getting to see their neighbors. Um, they're getting to, you know, feel connected again with other people. Uh, they're getting that warm and fuzzy because they're probably raising money, helping to raise money for something. And for them, they see it as fun. They're not, they're not sitting there for five hours preparing for the group to come, right? So um, this is when when we're seeing a lot of um interest and growth. And Pete, who's on, and I'm glad he's on, can tell you that he gets to see from all of these Facebook pages all over the nation, a lot of Granges starting to share events um, as you know posters or as posts, but not a lot who are taking this next step, which is kind of why I wanted to make sure we hit this tonight. Um, why does that matter? Well, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, and go to my pages. And you notice that this is not the one that has 900 different things. This is the personal page of mine, um, not my professional one, but this is where I work um, on our local Grange's stuff. Um, so when you have an event um, on your page and you get into your page, um, you can see what is happening, what's coming up. And here you'll see an event that we have coming up. Um, so now that you've done all of the things that we talked about that Phil got to show you, um, you, and you have an event posted, you can go into it and you can do some things like inviting people to it as he showed you. Um, and so obviously I see who's already going, who's already been invited, things like that. Um, but I also see who might have not been invited yet that should be. So I'm going to invite some of these folks. Um, these invites are really important because they help not only tell you who's coming, um, but when I invite Pete, 
um, he will invite his friends sometimes as soon as he goes. And it's the power of this social sharing that's really important. The other thing that I wanted to show you is this little button. Um, this gives you an, uh, an event link. And it also gives you other options of where to share things too. So for example, you might have a really popular friend. We've all had the popular friends. We weren't the popular people maybe in high school or if you were, that's great. Um, but I know if I share something onto their timeline and they get into it and they promote it or they comment back, especially if they comment back like, oh, this seems interesting, their friends will see it. And so, you know, the person on your, your Facebook feed that has, you know, 2000 friends. These are the people who you want to pick to send this to. So I may just to see you there. So uh, Will is going to be at this event and he's going to be taking part. And so I'm posting this to his page. It'll make it really easy for him to share. Um, Additionally, like my mom is not on Facebook. And so we have spent our entire evening talking about all of the people who are on Facebook. Most of you are because, well, you're here not complaining that you don't have Facebook. Um, but certainly we know lots of people who are not on it. And so I wanted to show you this because um, this allows you to copy. You'll notice it says link copied down here. So this little arrow, click on that. It'll say link copied. And this will allow me to email someone about um, our event completely offline. I realized that if I flip over to another um, another thing, my sharing doesn't flip with me to a different app. So um, I just pulled up my email um, and I will put in my mom's email address and I will drop this link in, which you can't see. So just bear with me and tell her, here's the information. Not only is she getting the um, link to this page, which even though she doesn't have Facebook, she can still see, um, but also she can share that link with all of her friends who don't have Facebook or who may be around. So that's an important little feature of this, I think. Um, and you also can share to other pages and other groups if you manage them or if you're part of them. So that's just something of interest. Uh, the last the thing. other thing that I wanted to point out quickly is what I call organic shares. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as somebody responds that they are going to your event, it now appears on their Facebook page and in your Facebook feed, if you're a friend with them, which is why as you're going through Facebook, sometimes you're like, I don't know this event. Why am I seeing this? It's because one of your friends has liked it. So it's an organic, unpaid way that your event is getting further out in the public. So if I responded that I was going to the jack-o'-lantern jubilee which i wish i could but i will be in maryland um then I, I as soon as i click like on it my friends can now see that i'm interested in or going to that event um the other two pieces that i wanted to show you here were the discussion so somebody might say is this really a costume event um so we turned off our post permissions um just because uh, there was this Skookal, which uh, Skookal, which is a calendar that links up to other events in our community. So it shares with people what's going on in our community. Um, they had some problems on their site with people like putting terrible images and messages as comments. So um, we luckily did not have that happen on our page, but I saw it happening on theirs and I kind of shut down comments, but someone could, um, put a comment or a question up here so they can interact with you about the event. They might say, you know, is it costume? Do I have to be in a costume? Um, I'd like to bring my 15 year old. Is that okay? Like whatever, whatever their questions are going to be. So you can interact with your folks here or you can set it not to, that's fine. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to show you is um, when Phil was setting up his event and when I set up this event, um, one of the things that you saw was the opportunity for you to create a link for tickets. Um, and so that's the last part of what I want to talk about before I let you guys uh, talk tonight. And that is um, if you are doing any type of event, like even a chicken barbecue or a spaghetti dinner, um, one of the things that you might want to do is create um, an online RSVP or an online form to buy tickets. So 
this goes directly to our website where we set up um, a place where you can buy a ticket. You get more information about the event um, and you can create your order for a ticket here. So this is obviously a different type of event than what most of us are gonna put on. Most of us are gonna put on that spaghetti dinner. Um, and we may just need to know how many butts are coming, how many people are coming to, to the event. Um, or we may want to get uh, you know somebody to pay. This allows us to do this through our website. But if you are not um, trying to do that on your website um, or you don't have a website or you don't feel com comfortable or confident um, with creating a site, one of the options that I wanted to give you or, or show you that's pretty easy um, is creating a Google form. And so I know that we didn't kind of advertise or build that tonight, but I think it's still an important little piece um, that we can add to making this um, a really useful tool uh, through your pages. So if you just Google, Google Forms, if you have a Gmail account or a Google account, you will be able to use Google Forms for free um, to create really simple things. And so um, I'm already logged into my Google account. So I'm gonna click on go to forms. And RSVP is actually one of the types of forms that it offers right up here, super simple. Um, party invites, contact information. Very, very um, standard stuff is here in this template gallery. Um, so they've got a couple different RSVP types. I'm going to click on one of these and I'm just going to use this um, and show you how to manage a Google form really quickly. So I want to change this to my uh, spaghetti dinner and we'll leave all that stuff. Let's pretend that was all correct, but you can edit your information here. Um, you might want to put obviously the date be October 2nd and time might be 4 to 7 p.m. Um, or whatever other information you think is relevant. And then because I clicked a template, um, it's given me some already pre-made questions. Um, can you attend? Yes, I'll be there. Um, sorry, I can't make it. So maybe I want to say... Um, not only can you attend, yes, I'll eat in. <clears throat> um, yes, I'll take food to go. And then no, but I will donate. I assume that somebody's not gonna come to this form if they're not gonna RSVP. So like asking them, no, I will not go seems a little silly. Um, you might want to say instead of what are the names of the people attending, um, because we don't need to know that for a spaghetti dinner, for example, I'm going to create maybe a drop down and I'm going to say how many, mm -mm, uh, how many dinners would you like? You guys know as well as I do, this would be a really helpful tool for preparing food um, for a group because you need to know how many people you want to prepare for. Are you getting and buying and, you know, doing spaghetti for a hundred or are you doing spaghetti for 500? That's a very different shopping list. So um, having the ability to, you know, choose what you're doing um, here is good. You can create a required or not required on this form. Um, so obviously if you've given the option not to attend here, requiring them to tell you how many meals would be silly. So just think through some of those things. Um, if it's required, you'll see this little asterisk come up when you're off of that. So you see where that asterisk is right there. Um, and then how did you hear about this event? That's always good to know. Um, do they you know, hear it in one way or another? Uh, maybe we're going to put Facebook and instead of newsletter, we'll put flyer. So there you go. And then comments or questions. I don't know if you need that if you're just doing a spaghetti dinner, but fine. Um, we'll leave that one. If you wanted to add um, an option like uh, where would you like the funds to go, 
So like if this is a fundraiser, but we haven't determined where those funds are going, scholarships. Mm -mm. Um, animal shelter. And then building renovations. You can choose all different types of things here. Um, Phil, I know when you guys do a dinner at one of your, at your Grange, I think you asked them if they're going to come like early or late um, or something like that. One of the Granges I know did that. They wanted to know if they were coming at the four o'clock hour or the six o'clock hour. Um, I think it was during COVID maybe to limit the number of physical people in the building. Um, but you could add something like a time or whatever you'd like. Then the next thing is here on responses, obviously we have no responses um, currently, but we are accepting them. And you can see that by this thing. Now, once your spaghetti dinner's over and you don't want anybody to RSVP anymore, one easy way to do that is just flip that little lever over and it'll tell you it's not accepting responses. So people aren't expecting that they're getting spaghetti dinner next year, um, if you haven't said it yet. And then the last thing um, is over here on the settings, you'll want to go to responses. And um, I like to collect the email addresses just because that means, as Phil has talked about before, this is an easy list of people, low hanging fruit to invite to anything else that you have going on. Um, but also if we thought there was going to be 500 people showing up that day, somebody may be paid or so they were coming and didn't come. And we've got a bunch of uh, meals left. We can quick send out an email and say, hey, don't forget, you know, today's the day or, hey, we've got a bunch of meals left. Um, you know, we've got an hour to come in and purchase one or whatever you'd like to do. Um, you can limit the number of responses and you can allow somebody to edit it. Um, and so, and you can give them a copy. So you've got lots of options. And then uh, you can add collaborators. So like, maybe I'm not sure if I really like this form and I'm gonna add Phil as a collaborator. Um, so he and I are sharing all kinds of things tonight. So I've just sent him an email um, so he can collaborate and, and change things. So if you're not the only one working on an event, that would be an option. And then you can preview, pre preview your form see what it looks like. If you're happy with it, I got to get this out from under here. Um, then you can hit send. And this gives you the option to send it by email or to get a link uh, or to embed it in a, uh, in a website. So my assumption is if you're managing your own website, you probably already know all about embedding and Google Forms and all that stuff. But this you would use if you're putting this on a website. So um, here is what you're looking for. You can shorten that URL. So it's really easy. Um, you can copy this, hit the copy button, and you can go back to that event that you were creating and put this in as your link um, to find tickets or to um, RSVP for the event. The other thing that you can do um, is you can share it directly to Facebook here. Um, and so if I'm signed in through Facebook and I'm on there, I can say, hey everyone, please come out to our fundraiser, blah, 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 and figure out where I'm sharing it to, my friends or everyone on Facebook, if I'm putting it up as my story and I can post it. I'm not gonna do that because it's not an actual event and I don't want people showing up at my house for spaghetti on the 2nd of October when I'm not going to be here. Um, but that's something that I wanted to show you that you can incorporate also when you're doing these um, pages and posts. So I'm going to stop there and stop sharing my screen. I hope that was kind of slow enough, but also informative. You can use this in many ways. You can use Google Forms to take a poll of your members. You know, what do you want to see at the potluck next week? or to do um, signups for volunteer shifts at your fair booth or whatever you're doing. You've got lots of options, but I do wanna show you that kind of free feature that can also connect with your Facebook page. So um, questions before I leave the last couple of minutes to have you guys share some successes or questions 
um, for the group about using um, especially the events or the Facebook pages. Amanda? Yes, sir. Can you hear me all right? I'm on my phone, so. I can hear you. Now, luckily, you wearing the Roll Tide shirt. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Woo! Uh, well, you'll find a mixture of people up there. Just don't pay any attention to those War Eagle people. <laughs> so um, I think it's a great topic. You know that I share all kinds of information that Granges are doing. And, and I, I think your point of Granges are seeing more traffic because of what they're putting on Facebook because it's more encompassing. One suggestion. Now, I've been around long enough. I know where most Granges are. <laughs> but Granges are great at putting Grange name, street address, and that's it. Town. <laughs> no town, no mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion, and, and as you said, a lot of Granges now doing the poster kind of Facebook posts, which are, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. But give us more than just your street address. Because there's two Granges. So I've got to hunt to figure out where they're at. <laughs> You know, um, but as you know, it, it can get overwhelming sometimes. I post so much, especially Saturdays, because Saturday mornings is all East Coast range, and Saturday afternoons are, are the Midwest, and Saturday evenings at two o'clock in the morning, all the West Coast range is posting things. But it's fantastic, as you as you and Phil said. You know, it's a broader area and a broader or spectrum of people that ranges are are getting information to because of the way it's shared. I didn't realize how you can share it and your friends can see it and all that. I did not realize that aspect. So that even opens that door larger. And, and as you said, you know, the Granges that are really having a great Facebook presence are seeing increases in, in not just membership, but people coming through the doors wanting to spend money. And Pete, I want to jump in and like, one of the great things that <clears throat> exist all over Facebook are these Facebook groups centered around communities. Um, I don't actually live in either of the communities where my Granges are. Um, one is just 10 miles down the road here at Eagle. But one of the things that I make sure always happens is that our Facebook posts from Eagle are always shared in a group called Montgomery News and Views um, to make sure that people in Montgomery can see what's going on as well and not just my friends. And that has, so... Amanda just alluded to our takeout dinners. And I know that we just picked up a couple more takeout meals because I remembered to share it to that post. Uh, and so now we're building up this, this following of people from the community who don't are, are learning what the Grange is uh, since we've been revitalizing Eagle over the past couple of years. So they now know to expect once every three months, two months that we have a meal coming up. I mean, people are starting to look for it because we share it there so often. That, that's a great point, Phil. I think if you look at Jonesburg, Grange, and Maine, I believe they post on about four different local Facebook pages, but it's traffic. Yep. And as you said, they're getting people from all over just because mm -hmm. they of, of, and I never thought about that, sharing the different local government, you know, yeah. Facebook pages. So, so if anybody's wondering kind of what, Phil and, and Pete are talking about here, um, this little sharing button that we talked about, right? Um, you can do this one of two ways. So I can share to a group that I am part of. I can share as me or I, I can share as Jefferson Grange. Um, and I, Jefferson Grange like, apparently hasn't liked or gotten into any of those other groups. So there we go. Um, but I guess I'm good enough to share in Orgsburg Borough Residence, which is the town right where this event's pretty much happening outside of. And so we invite all of you to attend this event that will... So we'll just make it simple tonight. Um, it automatically posts the information about the event. And you obviously can put some more information. So on October 22nd. Um, and now it is going to them. They do have a moderated group. So while I've sent it to them, I won't see it on their, their group page right away because they're moderating um, that stuff. But 
I can share it to multiple other things um, as well, or I can copy the link and go to, let's see, Schuylkill Haven PA community. So we have a couple of communities kind of centered right around here. And so I may go to theirs um, and they don't let anybody post immediately. So I have to send them a message and say, um, whatever. There we go. Can you please share this to your page? And now I've just given them the Facebook link um, and that, that up as well. So you can see, you can do this multiple ways. Um, but yeah, these community pages are great. Uh, you probably have one in your area. You guys might be part of it. Um, the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is your partners. So we have partnered with Special Olympics um, to do a softball tournament. And so I might message them as well and give them the option of whether or not they want to share it, but hoping you might share this event. Thought some of your parents and supporters might want to get out. Okay. And because we've raised money for them, hopefully some of their folks like us enough to want to raise money for us. So um, that's just some options of how you can use an event and then share it to multiple places in, in multiple ways. Trisha. Hey, um, Amanda. So talking about uh, getting permission from like that one group to, to, to be able to post things like that. And I know that Pete does this as well under the National Green Community Service page. Should like for me with my grain, should I allow people to make comments or should I, which, which way should you go? Should you allow people to make comments or should it be able, they got to get permission from the, the, the administrator to do so? On your page? Mm -hmm. um, I think that the more times you can get your community to interact with you, the better off you are. And I really encourage you to have multiple different types of posts on your page. So yes, you're inviting them to an event, but you're also saying, what was your favorite memory uh you know in the Grange Hall for example if your if your Grange Hall has really been well used by your community over the years or what's your favorite type of ice cream if you're promoting that it's you know National Dairy Month or something like that the more times you can get people to interact with the Grange you um as if you're a friend you become a friend um okay. and they're more likely to come out to your events and stuff you are going to have to moderate sometimes there's very, very rarely that I think our little Granges probably will draw, you know, uh, some bot or something that's. Posted. Oh, I, I had I had somebody a month or so ago. I think it was right after our county fair, which was mid August, that uh, when I posted something, made a comment that I was just kind of like seriously, and it's it's just very annoying that somebody that isn't even somebody's just you know we all know it. There's people out there just spamming and just doing that kind of crap, and it's just very annoying to find out that somebody's put a nasty comment on your page like that. Phil will tell you, he's probably doing the same thing. I know I definitely did it. Um, uh, the fellows became my shower buddies, as I like to call them. And by that, <laughs> I mean, right. It sounds terrible, right? But it made them remember. I, like, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I knew that there were times where things were going to be happening on our page. Maybe we had a post that somebody would find controversial or there had been some discussion back and forth. Or maybe there was a disgruntled member who'd already posted something that day that was iffy. Um, and, you know, at some point I have to go take a shower. So it was like messaging Phil or messaging Elizabeth or messaging Lindsay or, or one of the fellows and being like, hey, can you watch the page? You know, will you babysit basically? And luckily having fellows on the West Coast as, as irritating as this is, that they're doing things at two in the morning that I'm already <laughs> asleep for, it was great. Um to be able to be like, hey, will you be my shower buddy on the page? And they knew what that meant because it was like, Amanda just needs a break, but somebody's got to watch this. So having moderators is really important. Just yeah. to, um, and I, I suggest that for any of you guys. And as Phil showed you, your moderators don't have to have the same permissions you do. They don't have to be able to literally change everything on your page and you know be administrators. They can just be moderators or content people. But um, it's really good to have those extra people who can watch for things thank you yep. what other questions i see that there's some stuff in the chat i'm sorry i've been ignoring the chat okay good 
most of that chat is for Phil. Thank goodness. Yeah, please, please drop your emails in there if you'd like me to email you the uh, proper Grange logos for your use as well as information about the Grange Heirloom Program for use on your Facebook pages. Yes, please use that. Um, okay, so I'd love to just give you guys a couple of minutes, share if you have a, an anecdote about using um, the events or using your page for something that you might think that someone else here could benefit from hearing, uh, good, bad, or ugly. Um, I think we sometimes learn the best from the things that didn't work and we get to laugh at each other for them. So um, feel free to share. Nobody. We're all very quiet tonight. I could share. This is Joe Bensack from uh, Piney Joe. Grange. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Welcome back. Not too bad. I know we put up uh, Pioneer's new uh, uh, Facebook page. I think it was a couple of months ago, and it's been very successful. Nice. And I know how. I mean, I manage a few Facebook pages, and what I do is I I set the comments so they have to be reviewed, so you don't have to be. Uh, monitoring them all the time because you'll get people that'll they'll put it what they call spam on there or somebody says some type of comment that's not pertaining to it or uh, a complaint or whatnot instead of having to be watching over it like a hawk all the time you can go ahead and uh when you get a chance to review the page you know maybe daily or every other day or whatnot you'll see those will be in queue for approval and you can either approve them or reject them at that time so it doesn't get on to the public. So I thought that was just something that we would go through and that's easier. And that's absolutely your choice. I mean, we kind of chose to to do the open forum as much as possible, just because frankly, we have members who would be really offended that their comment wasn't just automatically posted and that we didn't trust them. And so we kind of went with the, we're gonna trust it unless we absolutely have to lock it down because we're having some kind of major issue. Um, but yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. I don't think you're going to have a lot of your community members getting that upset with you if they don't see their post immediately. He doesn't want any shower buddies. That's what he's saying. They're also good, but I travel buddies. Cause, uh, I know you were on a plane at one point you were like, I'm flying. Can you please watch the page for like the next six hours? Yes. Um, which sometimes, you know, we have to travel, so. <laughs> yeah, strangely, they don't let us have the internet in the air all the time. Sometimes you get on a plane and they're like, we have internet. And then they're like, but we don't. Oh. I've never been on a plane that the Wi-Fi actually works, so. Horrible. Anything else you guys want to share? Amanda, this is Susie. Hey, Susie. And I was going to say this uh, weekend for our community fair, we did, we always do event things for our stuff. But we decided to throw some money and boost it. Good, yeah. And I think it, you know, there was I made a whole bunch more chatter that mm -hmm. I was hearing and people, I could see where people were sharing things. And I think it made a difference in the turnout. I'm actually glad that you, you brought that up because I wanted to follow this up and it just by, you know, the virtue of our schedules once we hit the end of September or so here. Um, we're in convention mode, but I was thinking in probably January or February doing a kind of a 201, as you guys had noted, um, with talking about boosting, because everybody who just heard how to create a page is now going to see this thing that says boost, and they're going to go, I thought Facebook was free. And so I uh, wanted to work with Phil and the fellows to talk about what would be um, good practice if you're going to decide to put any money into boosting any posts or when it may be the most appropriate. Um, but I don't want to bog him down right now. So I'm really glad that you said that because that's that's good for, I think, everybody to hear that is an option that you can do. And it's also something that can really work out well for you. I agree. We've boosted some things. I love the fact that I get to say, sorry, Facebook, you only get $10 to work with. And like, they don't come back and, you know, oh, we told 400 people and you owe us $600, right? Like I get to set how much is coming off my credit card or my PayPal or whatever. Um, so yeah, I like the boosting, but there's certainly like times where it's almost unnecessary um, and times where it's probably cool because it's unexpected. So um, I definitely want to see if we can have a discussion about that in the early part of next year. So you might be one of our star subjects talking about how, how it worked out. I 
do want to invite you guys. Um, membership matters. We'll keep trying to do a little bit of sharing and stuff at the end, like like always. But we'll keep some kind of topic um, this third Tuesday of the month, like normal. The first Sunday of most months, I'm going to try to have um, a topically relevant sharing. It's not always going to have anything to do with what we just dealt with. Um, in fact, you know, we know that the next time, um, October 2nd, when we have our first one of these, it has nothing to do with Facebook or anything. So invite your friends um, who are scared of the internet, but um, hopefully you guys will all come out for that. I'd really like to grow that into something where we have, you know, a bunch of folks who are in the queue who have said up, I know something about that topic and I'd like to take two or three minutes to share and give information that people can copy down and also take some questions in advance that we can throw out to the group. Um, but I think for the first one or two, we should be able to kind of, you know, take this as it goes. So um, there'll be more information out about that. I think, Phil, you have it in next week's PC or this week's PC? Sure will. It'll be in this Friday. Yeah. So subscribe to the patrons chain, nationalgrange.org slash subscribe. Definitely should be. And also, I just put in the comments, um, if you would like to see other tutorial Zooms um, from the comm department, uh, please email me some topic suggestions. Um, the fellows and I, they they are in for the year, so I'll be putting some of them to work um, in future months. So if you have something in comm land that you would like to learn about, let me know. Yay. Um, also, as you know, as I've mentioned already, um, we are about to go into our convention season. We hope to see you guys there. Um, convention is in Reno, Sparks, Nevada um, this year. It is a fun time for everybody. Um, everyone who's a Grange member and even those who aren't yet are invited to attend. Um, you can go onto our registration on our website. Um, this is not just for delegates or officers. There is um, starting to be, I think, a little bit more robust stuff throughout the entire week, not just like Friday and Saturday, um, that anybody can come in. I, again, am a real big dork, so I like to sit in on the meeting when the delegates are talking about policy um, and getting in the weeds on things, but you can certainly go um, <laughs> the indoor tour that we're having. You can um, meet some of the folks who are in Nevada who are holding up that Grange Youth Fair program out there and learn from them. You can go and see Phil do a presentation, uh, see the fellows do some stuff, hang out with the juniors, um, watch their talent show. We've got lots and lots of things going on. So I really encourage you all, if you haven't um, yet attended a national session to consider it. And if you've got some time this November to come. Um, but I say this all to say that if you are doing something that deals with National Grange staff um, in October or November, please give us just a little bit of extra time and a little bit of extra patience um, because we may be uh, drowning in the midst of convention preparation. If you have something that you need from the store um, or you need from our membership recognition department, especially, please, please give her um, extra leeway um, in time because she is also helping with convention planning. Um, that's Loretta. And so she will be able to get you stuff, but, um, it may take a little longer than usual. And then in addition, I should say that November 10th through the 20th, there's no staff in the office. Um, so if you're looking for like a membership certificate or plaque, um, to give out, let's say on the, uh, you know, end of November, you probably should order that in October maybe even early October, um, because everyone on your staff ends up at convention. We are so small at this point that we all are there. Um, so please give a little extra time um, and patience for that. Um, all right. Well, if we don't have any more comments or suggestions to anybody who wants to do a public service announcement or anything like that, I will close us off for the night. I'm looking forward to seeing most of you October 2nd. Um, there'll be information out about that, but just stick it on your calendar, seven o'clock Eastern time. It's a Sunday night. So I kind of did a little early. I figured people would not have to be worrying about rushing home from work in the same way they might if they're working on Monday through Friday at nine to five. Um, we'll see if that time and day works. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll try and push it around. Um, but Otherwise, thank you guys for joining us tonight. A lot of you coming early. Thanks, Phil. This is great. And I agree with you. Uh, I'm excited about your kind of every other month 
Zoom tutorial in the comm realm. Uh, so this is a really good introduction to <laughs> how Phil presents and how that will go and how the fellows will be able to get involved. So it's really awesome.